we can all grab our Bibles, open our Bible apps. This is my Bible. This is God speaking to me. My eyes are open. My heart is prepared to receive all of God's promises and instructions. Today I make my Bible the final authority in my life so that in every circumstance I will bear good fruit and others will see Christ in me. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, I just thank you and praise you, Father God, for this day. I thank you for the opportunity, Father God, to be used as a vessel for you, Father. I thank you that you speak through my mouth, Father God. Allow this message to be none of me and all of you. Father, I thank you that each and every one of us has ears to hear, Father, your word that comes forth. And that we have the, the understanding, Father God, to apply it to our lives, Father, so that we can be a light, Father God, to all of those who need to see us, see you in us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So excited. All right. Oh, I didn't put this in here right. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> So this morning, the title of the message is, Boast in Our Weakness. Boast in Our Weakness. Um, this, this study for me was amazing because, um, you know, my husband and I have conversations all the time and we talk about our strengths all the time. And most of the time, you know, if you listen to songs or you watch TV, Everything is about how strong we are. Nine times out of ten, you're going to tell, but you know, I'm not weak. You know, my husband, he, you know, he likes to, he told you guys he is a ninja, he thinks. So, therefore, that just goes to show that he's always boasting in his strength and how strong of a man he is. And he is, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, he kills the cockroaches at our house, you know. He's the one who goes after the spiders and all of those things. He, he does that. <laughs> Um, because he is, he is such a strong man. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that nine times out of ten all of us know, we're not taught to be weak. We're not taught to be weak. Um, weak people in this world, don't, we don't, they don't get anything. You know, weak people in this world, they, um, they don't, you know, get the best jobs. Weak people don't have the most money because you're too weak to go after those things. Strong people are the ones who have everything. They're the ones who are on top. They're the ones who are in front of the camera all the time. You know, they're the ones who are trying to follow to, you know, wear what they wear because, oh, they're so strong. I want to be like them. But one of the things that I was realizing was that maybe, maybe they're not that strong. One of the things God was telling me, you know, I, I was... Um, I was thinking about how a lot of women, uh, well, maybe not today, I don't know, but I know um, a few years ago, a lot of women were um, getting artificially inseminated by themselves um, to get pregnant and have children, you know? And, and there's a, 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 a movement of, of strong women, you know? I don't need a man to have a baby. I don't need that, I could just go to the clinic you know, they can put the baby in me because I'm strong. I don't need a man to, to tell me how to be a mother. I don't need a man. I can work. I could be a lawyer. I could do this. I can have children. I can do all of that by myself. I don't need a man. You know, and if you look at a lot of the children today, and if you look at a lot of the boys growing to be men today, who are being raised, not by women who, you know, might have gotten into a situation and are raising children by themselves because of the fact that divorce or death, but women who are so strong, yet they're not raising strong children. A lot of their children think they're strong, but they're walking in the ways of the world. They're doing all of these other things because these strong women who are actually in some ways weak. Why? Why were they weak? They were weak because they are not able to submit to the man the way that God called us to do. So it's actually maybe not so strong to raise a child by yourself or to not have a man, which is the way that God created for us to have children and for us to be fruitful and to multiply. 
um, maybe it's not as strong as we think it is. So as I was studying this out, God showed me, you know, as I was saying, Lord, why should we boast in our weakness? What, uh, that, that doesn't make any sense. And he told me our weakness was part of his plan. Our weakness was part of God's plan. So if we can turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Sorry. Normally I, I you know, I would have had this all uh, like marked and everything. But I don't know if, if anybody knows, out of the eight children that we have, um, three of their birthdays are this week. So <laughs> it is a blessing that I have this message done. So I, you know, it might take me a few minutes to, um, to turn to the scriptures, however. <laughs> it is, or I might, you know, just look and read on the prompt. Um, <clears throat> so 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 through 27 says, brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God, God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things. Everybody say, God chose the weak God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God never intended for us to be self-sufficient. He always intended from the beginning, God intended for us to be God-sufficient. He never intended for us to do it on our own. He said he chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. One of the things, like I said, the people that are all, you know, in front of the television and they're all on every channel, every station. But it says that um, think of, of where you were when you were called. When God called you, not, not too many of us were wise by human standards. Not too many of us. I, just think about where you were when God called you. When he brought you to your knees, think about what you did the night before. It says not too many of us were influential. Not too many of us were on television being interviewed by, you know, Oprah and all them. Not too many of us were there when God called us. And he turns around and says he chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. God wants us to be God sufficient for his perfect purpose. It's all part of his plan. Paul says, when I am weak, then I am strong. It almost seems like it contradicts itself. When I am weak, then I am strong. How is that even possible? So this morning, we are going to discover how when you're weak, you're actually strong. And then we're going to um, talk about uh, four ways to boast in that weakness, because God tells us to do that in his word. So the first way to boast in his weakness is we must admit to ourselves that we are weak. We have to admit that we are weak. That's the first step. We have to stop telling everybody we're a ninja. We have to tell people, tell ourselves first, that I am weak. Let's turn to Romans chapter 7 verse 14 through 25. Now I am going to tell you, I'm, I'm, this is a scripture that we've read so many times, but I'm going to read it in the message version this morning. Um, so if you want to just read it up on the prompter, if you don't have the message version, that's what I'm going to read it in this morning. So Romans chapter 7, verse 14 through 25. It says, I can anticipate the response that is coming. I know that all God's commands are spiritual, but I'm not. 
isn't this also your experience? Don't you guys feel the same way? Isn't this your experience? You know that God's things are spiritual, but, uh, but I'm not. It says, yes, I am full of myself. After all, I've spent a long time in sin's prison. What I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way, but then I act another, doing things I absolutely despise. So if I can't be trusted to figure out what is best for myself and then do it, it becomes obvious that God's command is necessary. But I need something more, for if I know the law but still can't keep it, and if the power of sin within me keeps sabotaging my best intentions, I obviously need help. I realize that I don't have what it takes. I can will it, but I can't do it. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. My, decision, my decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. Something has gone wrong deep within, deep within me and gets the better of me every time. It happens so regularly that it's predictable. The moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. I truly delight in God's commands, but it's pretty obvious that not all of me joins in that delight. Parts of me covertly rebel, and just when I least expect it, they take, they take charge. I've tried everything, and nothing helps. I'm at the end of my rope. Is there no one who can do anything for me? Isn't that the real question? Paul says, pretty much, when I want to do right, I can't do right. I can't do right. He's admitting to himself, I alone am weak. I cannot do right, even when I want to do right. I can't do right. I'm, Eddie one time, um, for those of you who may not know, um, it, he's a, you know, a guy who was coming to this church, the sibling of the many Conovers that attend. Um, he said one time, and I thought about it when I was doing this, he said, good people do bad things with good intentions. Good people do bad things with good intentions. Why? Because we're weak. We alone are weak and we have to admit that to ourselves. I cannot do right by myself, I can't. You know, I could go over to Sister Jewel and say, you know, Sister Jewel, you know, because I'm not gossiping. We're going to pray. We're going to pray about Brother Terrence because, you know, girl, you know his wife is tripping. Let's pray about them. Girl, how is she tripping? Let me t tell you how she's tripping first, and then we're going to pray about her. Why? Because good people do bad things with good intentions because I alone am weak. I'm weak. I can't do it. But I have to admit that to myself. We easily see the speck in everyone else's imperfections. We easily see the speck in everyone else's imperfections. And we fail to see the plank in our perfections. Okay? We fail to see this big old boulder that is standing in front of me because of the fact that we see the speck in other people's imperfections. Why? Because I alone am weak. Um, Pastor Grady said it this morning. The Bible tells us to love God and love people. Yet we're so busy judging everybody and talking about everybody because they're not doing it right. But guess what? That shows that I alone am weak because I'm just supposed to walk in love in everything that I do. I would like everybody right now, everybody in this church is going to admit to themselves that I alone am weak. So together we are going to say, I alone am weak. Okay, ready? Say it with me. I alone am weak. First step, now you can boast in your weakness a little bit because you have finally admitted 
that you are weak. You are weak without God, but that's okay. You know why? Because our weakness was part of his plan. So it's okay. Don't cry. It's okay. We are weak and it's, it's all right. God planned for us to be that way. So let's go on to, um, to our second point. Now I'm going to try not to go through these too fast, but then just a little fast because Ms. Jewel tells me I'm long-winded sometimes. So our second way to boast in weakness is we must be honest to others about our weakness. We must be honest to others about our weakness. Let's turn to Acts chapter 14, verse 8 through 15. Okay. So this is in the NIV version. Okay, it says in Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He, excuse me, he had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed and called out, stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in Laconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he, had, he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd shouting, friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are only human like you. Paul had to admit to others his weakness. I am not a God. I am not this Zeus that you call me or Hermes. I am a human just like you. We have to admit to others that what our weaknesses are. And in this case, Paul's weakness was he was just a human. God, through, through God, God gave him the ability to heal somebody. God may give you the ability to keep a very clean home, but that doesn't mean you have it all together. God may give you the ability to dress to the nine all the time, but that does not mean that you are not weak, that you have no weaknesses. Your marriage may, may be great, but your finances may stink because just because you do one thing great does not mean that you have all the power now. We have to admit to others our weaknesses. Yes, Paul had the power to heal, but he was still just a human, just like they were. And it upset him so much he tore his clothes. I'm not going to tear my clothes, but it'll upset me too. If you guys come and start bowing down to, I will, I will probably run away. That would scare me for somebody to come and give me that much praise. I, you know, I was reading in Revelation, and one of the things, um, was it John? Thank God. I don't know. But um, <laughs> I have to read Revelation again, I guess. But um, when he was giving him the vision, and, you know, he would bow down before the angels, and they said, no, get up. Get up. Don't do that to me. Give God all the glory. Even the angels who sit up there and, and, and are up there with God at all times in heavenly places, don't bow down to me. I am, I am nothing. They have to admit to others their weaknesses. We are not gods sent to impress the world with how strong and powerful we are. You know, the other day, um, and I wrote this down because I wanted to, to get, use it as an example, but um, Grady came and he dropped off Colton. And my sister stopped by and she, um, you know, was there and it was her son and my children. And then she also brought my niece and my nephew. So again, you have eight and then you have three 
and all together, that's a big party, okay? So, you know, they're making noise and they're loud and, you know, I'm like, okay, I know they said they were going to bring Colton, like, you know, late afternoon, early evening, you know. And um, finally I was like, oh, man, this house looks a mess. I need to call them and see where they're at. So I called and, or no, I had Elisha call and I said, see, you know, how, about how long it's going to be until they get here. And Elisha says, oh, he said they're not even 10 minutes away. I'm like, oh, oh Lord Jesus. Okay, I got to get up, everybody. We got to clean up everything. Well, every, they're coming. You know why? Because I wanted them to see the perfection in my home. And I didn't want to admit to them at this point that I was a little weak in this area, okay? I'm a little weak when it comes to keeping the house clean with all those kids there. Not Hey, my thing is, do your thing. You know, when you go to bed, I'll clean it up. It'll be clean in the morning. It'll be dirty again by 12. You know, just don't, don't stop by, okay? Just don't call before you come so I can get it, you know, get it together. You know, and I told Grady, I was like, oh, man, you know. I was like, you know, I really didn't want Colton to see the house like this, you know. So, Colton, don't talk about my house. But, um, you know, but that's the thing. We, we don't want to admit to people that we are weak. We want them to come by and everything, you know, hallelujah. This is my home. Praise God. Because what is that going to show you? It's going to show you how strong I am. You know why? Because I got eight kids, okay? And my house is perfect all the time. You know what I'm saying? And so then what are people going to They're going to see the perfection in me, you know, because that's what I want them to see. And they don't realize that, you know, my fingers hurt, okay? Because I had to clean this house before you came by, okay? It took three hours to get it done. I don't, want, I don't want them to know that part. I want them to think it's like this all the time. So we have to keep it real. Get off your high horse. You are weak just like me. I'm a human just like you. We need God. We cannot do this on our own. Get off your high horse, okay? And admit to other people, is my house not like this all the time, okay? It's all right. <laughs> Just admit it. Amen. Admit to other people. I wrote down here, don't get it twisted. I'm human just like you. Know. So that's, that's the, the second thing. We have, to, um, we have to admit to other people. And we have to, when we, when we boast in our weakness, and, but not wallow. You know, they're two different things. You know, when we boast in our weakness, when we say, Grady, you know, my house isn't clean all the time. <laughs> it's not. I could either say that or I can say, Jesus Christ, my house ain't never clean. You know, you know at Wallow, those are two different things, okay? But see, when we boast in our weakness, people will see the power of God in and through us. They will see those things in and through us. One of the things I, was, I, I wrote down here was like um, Pastor Timberly and, and Andre, Pastor Andre and Timberly. Um, we know their health issues. We know that sometimes it's hard to even get up here. We know that it's difficult. Yet when you see them, I, I'm going to be honest, that, you know, when she listens to this, she might call me. But... Um, <laughs> There were, you know, there were times where she would tell me, you know, girl, it was hard to get up out the bed this morning. And I, you know, I'd be like, it wasn't that hard. You know, because I, you know, I come to her house and her house is clean all the time. Okay. You know, or she, she comes and you know, like me, I couldn't get all this typed up. I couldn't do all of that. She has all that stuff done. You know, everything, everything's ironed. You know, I, I ironed my dress this morning while it was on because I couldn't take it back off. So I had to put it, you know, because it looked real bad. It looked real bad. And I was like, mm, I can't do that. I can't. So don't look in the back because I couldn't. I, anyways, all of her stuff is always done. So I, you know. I did. I, you, it, it wasn't that hard to get out the, the bed, Tim. I, it couldn't have been, you know. And God had to show me that people will see him through you when you boast in your weakness. When you tell people that you are weak and that there are areas that you're weak in, they, are not, they can't do anything but see God. How? How is it possible that you couldn't get out of the bed this morning but you're up here. Uh, you know, Pastor Lori, 
I'm sorry. But at the end, you know, of, of her time being here with us and blessing us and, and all of the things that she was going through and to walk up on stage and stand, you know, there were times that she's standing during praise and worship and I'm like, you know, you just, yeah, it doesn't hurt that bad. Because, and you know it hurt. I mean, at, the, at you know, towards the end, it, with, she would, I, I was told that there were times that she would just be upstairs in her room because it hurt to come downstairs. But then you come up here on Sunday or Saturday at that time and you can give the word as if nothing is wrong with you? It's because when we boast in our weakness, people, people don't see the weakness, they see the strength because it's God working through you. My last example for this point was, you know, I'm just going to share this and I had to ask my husband because you know it's a little embarrassing but it's okay so the other day my husband and I were talking about um our weakness our weakness one of our weaknesses is our finances okay so I was having a conversation with a friend and um they were talking about you know what they are bringing in you know and so I looked it up and it was saying you know I, I looked up what is the um what is the standard, you know, for a family of four? What should they bring in financially to be, you know, to be okay? And so by the government standards, a family of four should bring in about $53,000. So I was upset, okay, because I did. This friend kind of told me, you know, the different um, things where they bring in money, uh, or bring in finances. And I was like, they're middle class. You know, I mean, it might be difficult, but, you know, you're in middle class, right? So, you know, I did the math. And with, we have 10 people in our household. And so if you take that 53,000 times two, that brings you to about 100 and what, 106,000, okay? And then we're gonna add half of that, okay? So we'll just add another 25,000. So that kind of brings you to $130,000 a year. That's what I would need to bring in for my family to be in the middle class. Okay, so imagine my surprise when I found out that the government looks at us as if we are in poverty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was hot. I was upset. I mean, I, I wallowed for a few minutes. I was like, Jesus, we are in poverty. It was a surprise to me. And I'm just be totally honest. I was like, for real, Lord? I mean, you... Yeah, we met, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it was, it was a huge surprise to me, and I was wallowing. And do you know what God told me? God said, do you know that if you walk down the street with all of your children, you can go to any store. Nobody would ever assume that your financial status was poverse. Nobody. There are so many people that I come up to that, um, you know, well, I'll have the kids and, you know, I'll be in Costco. Are these all your kids? And I say, oh, yeah, these are all mine. And they'll say, oh, your husband must have a great job. Because that's all they see. Because in my weakness, God is strong in me, in us. He is strong. But, you know, so we boast in that. I'm going to boast that, you know, um, I'm going to work on boasting in the fact that they think, you know, we're in poverty. I'm going to work on that. Babe, we're going to work on that. We're going to work on that. So our third point, our third way to boast in our weakness is we must embrace our weakness. We must embrace our weakness. So we're going to turn to 1 Corinthians 9, chapter 9, verse 22. I'm not even going to turn anymore. I'm just not. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22. Paul says, To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by 
all means, save some. Not even everybody. So you mean to tell me that Paul's going to become as weak. He's going to embrace his weakness so he can go out into the world and save the weak. You know, sometimes um, we, we want to walk around. I'm going to use Pastor Timberley's favorite word, all gucci up, you know. We want to walk around as if, again, we have everything all together. But then we make ourselves unapproachable. People, they, they don't even want to talk to you because they think that you're out of their class. They, they really can't. I, I had, a, there's a, one of my, my mentors, and, and she was like a second mother to me. And she, at one point, she lost her husband. Um, they got divorced, and then he passed away. And um, she, you know, she would come to the shop. This was back in, when I was doing hair. And she would come to the shop, and she would say, I just don't get it. And I'd say, what? She said, do you know men talk to me? Like, they, nobody talks to me. I know, no, you know, she was like, I want to date. But no men talk to me. And somebody, one of the ladies we were sitting there, and one of her clients said, that's because you're unapproachable. OK. <laughs> but and she was like, me? I'm just, you know, I love everybody. She said, when you go out and when you leave this shop, you, I mean, first of all, this woman has literally more shoes than I've ever seen. I, you know, she moved into a new house, and the one thing that she made sure she put away were her shoes. I, she just loves shoes. But she also has, I mean, nice clothes, and, you know, and she goes to work like that. You know, me, I'm like, uh, I don't want to get color on my clothes, so. But she didn't care. She still wanted to look nice. But she's very tall, you know, just beautiful woman. But when she walked around, she walked like she didn't need anything. She didn't need anything from anybody. She definitely didn't want, you know, the wrong man to come up to her. So therefore, she walked around, and she was very unapproachable. But what did Paul say? He said, I became weak. I embraced my weakness so that I could win some of the weak. Jesus did the same thing. Jesus, he could have, first of all, Jesus is king of kings, okay? He could have walked around with his crown on and, he, you know, oh, I'm Jesus, hallelujah, bow down at my feet. But what did he do? He became weak for the weak. Who are the weak? We are. Jesus became weak so he could win the weak, which is each and every one of us. He embraced the weakness because he, I mean, this is, this is the Lord. This is God. I mean, oh, my, this is God in the flesh. Are you, this is God. Just the way that, um, I don't, you know, those numbers, I don't remember all that. But just the way that Grady was talking about those numbers this morning. And how, this is God in the flesh who, who was homeless, who walked around and, oh, can you wrap? It is hard to wrap my mind around. All because he loved each and every one of us. He became weak for the weak. That alone will help me to boast in my weakness. Yeah, Lord, I'm weak. I need you, Jesus. <laughs> Come right here. Stand next to me because I'm, I'm weak, Father. Thank you. Man, just wrap, your, just wrap your mind around that. God became weak for each and every one of us just so he can win some. Just so he can win some. Because we all know everybody's not going to heaven as much as we want it to happen. But I, I used to hear a pastor say, God will knock on your heart all the way to the pits of hell if he has to. Right till that very last second, he will knock on your heart because he loves you that much. He sent his son down off of a throne to die your death 
because he loved us. He became weak for the weak. In order for us, we have to embrace our weakness in order for us to save anybody. We can't walk out there and, you know, be unapproachable because we have it all together. We have to get down and dirty in order to save those who are down and dirty. Our fourth point. We must be strong when we are weak. So the fourth way to boast in our weakness, we must be strong when we are weak. How? How does that work? Well, let's turn to 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7 through 10. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 10. It says, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. I just want to stop there really quick. He says twice, lest I should be exalted, I mean exalted above measure. God sent a thorn in the flesh. It was given to him. There was a thorn put in his, put in his flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. I didn't know what buffet meant. I know what a buffet is. I didn't know what buffet meant. So, buffet, in the biblical term, means to strike with a clenched fist. So that, this is a clenched fist. And it says, a messenger of Satan was sent to strike me with a clenched fist, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. You know why? Because it hurts. The other day, just yesterday, we were at, um, I don't know, the park, and my son, Ethan, three years old. He hit my son Anias, who's nine, he'll be 10 on the ninth. He socked him with a clenched fist in his stomach. And next thing you know, I look over and Anias is crying. And I'm like, what's the matter? And I guess it just caught him off guard and it took his breath away. And he's, you know, he's standing around in his, his tears. And I'm like, oh my God, what happened? Ethan buffeted him. <laughs> you know? He got him with the clenched fist in his stomach. That hurts. That's not, that doesn't feel good. So it says, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Next. Yep, I'm, I'm going to go to the next. Uh-huh. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in my weakness. So how must we be weak? How must we be strong when we are weak? We have to take pleasure in our weakness. I know some of you guys are like, what? Take pleasure in my poverty? Mm -mm. Take pleasure in my sickness? Take pleasure in the fact that I don't have a home right now? Take pleasure in the fact that my car does not work and I can't get to work? Take pleasure in the fact that I have to walk in a hundred and something degree weather and get on the bus? But that's what, that's what Paul says. He said to take pleasure in our weakness. That's how we're strong when we're weak. We take pleasure. This is a thorn that is in, that is in our side. 
that, that God gives us. That it says that, um, that he sent a messenger of Satan to Paul. And, you know, I, I was looking and I was studying and trying to figure out, okay, well, what was this thorn? Because I need to see, am, do I have it? Am I going to have it? You know, maybe it was the fact that, you know, Paul was growing hair in places that he shouldn't have, you know. It's, okay, so maybe I won't have a thorn. But see, it never, it doesn't talk about, I mean, there are different scholars say, you know, well, it could have been this and, you know, it could have been that. But it doesn't really specify what this thorn was. So name it. I mean, hey, what is your thorn? You could throw that out. It doesn't matter what the thorn is, but we each, each and every one of us have a thorn. Now, we can wallow for the rest of our lives. You know why? Because let me tell you, even if, like, like Grady was saying this morning, you know, we, we want God to, oh, Lord, take this away. You know, bring us more finances. Hey, God tomorrow can put us in middle class, and I will be very thankful, okay? I will be very thankful if... God put us in middle class and just, here, here's 120, what was it, 30,000, whatever, a year. Here it is. I would be thankful, but guess what? When I step this way, I'm going to step on another thorn. Because if God just gives us a hundred and something thousand dollars a year, puts us in middle class, and I don't ever have a thorn after that, what does Paul say? you may be exalted above measure. So God has to give you, there's going to be something, there's going to be a thorn until we go and be with Jesus. You are going to have a weakness. There is not one day that we live on this earth that we are going to walk without some type of, of weakness, and I will tell you right now, there is no possible way that you are going to be able to walk in strength if you try to conquer your weakness on your own. There's no possible way. The first thing that we said that we have to admit to ourselves that we are weak. I alone am weak. We're not, we can't do it. We can't do it. So we can either wallow for the rest of our lives because there will be a thorn, there will be a weakness, whether it's your marriage, whether it's an addiction, you know, your finances. I'm telling you, we've been dealing with finances for years, years. And I'm like, Lord, when, when, God? What did Paul say? Three times, Lord, please, take me out of this situation, God. Put me in a better situation. It is difficult with eight kids. It's difficult when this one wants that and this one needs that and this one can't go here. That is difficult, and I cry often because of the weakness that I deal with. I hurt so often. But I am so grateful to God. I am so grateful because you're talking about a family of 10 who by government standards lives in poverty. Yet we own our home. We own three cars. Well, one we're still paying on. Each and every one of our children has clothes and shoes. We eat every single day. There is food on the table. It is not easy. It's not easy at all. But I am here to tell you that if it had not been for God, if God was not the power on the inside of us, we could not do it. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I'm just going to be honest right now, you know? You know, you tell me that somebody's in poverty, you know, I, you know, I have a picture in my mind of what they look like. 
you know, just not saying that I don't shop at Walmart, but you know, they, you know, sometimes will say, mom, you know, you know, different, we is inside thing, but I'll say, girl, go to Walmart. You'll feel better after you walk out of there. You know, and I'm not saying that everybody, you know, but everybody knows that the running joke, at you look on Facebook, they always have, this is what you see in Walmart, you know. <laughs> so that's what, you know. But if you ask me what a person that is in poverty looks like, I have a picture in my mind. You can drive over in certain parts of, of Las Vegas and see people that live in poverty. But see, the difference is they live in poverty. They are trying to, um, they are trying to work out their poverse situation on their own. Most of them don't, a lot of them don't have anything. I mean, just look at our welfare system. And again, I'm not talking about it, okay? Because after I found out that I was in poverty, I was like, well, shoot, I'm gonna apply for welfare. <laughs> you know, keeping it real. And you know they have the nerve to say that I didn't qualify? What kind of world is this? <laughs> you tell me I live in poverty, you break me down to my knees, I'm crying, and then you say, but we're not gonna help you. What? Well, that be, you know why? Because God is strong in me. I don't, I really don't need food stamps. It's nice. I would take it, but I really don't need it, you know, because God supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And so therefore, I can be strong when I really am just weak. I'm just a mere human, just like each and every one of you. I am, I am weak. But when we boast in our weakness, that's how Paul can so boldly state what the end of that scripture says. When I am weak, I am strong. Let's pray.